Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be doing a video on steps to take when trying to diagnose a motorcycle that won't start. I'm sure most of you watching this video have ever been in a situation where you go to start your bike, it won't start one day, or you've been riding it, it just dies out, and you're trying to figure it out, trying to avoid costly repairs, and try to do this stuff yourself. So today I'm just going to walk you through a couple basic steps on the steps that I personally take on diagnosing a motorcycle that didn't start. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to determine when the motorcycle failed. If I was riding it or if someone else was riding it or how it failed. So I, I, first, like to, I first like to start by determining how the motorcycle failed. Was, was the person or yourself riding it down the road and it ended up dying? And this also goes for dirt bikes, street bikes, little pit bikes, whatever you got, scooters. It's basically the whole, it's, it's the same. Any internal combustion engine is gonna be the same concept in determining how to get it going. Now this is for a four stroke gasoline engine. Two strokes are a bit different, very similar, and diesel engines are a whole different world. But I like to determine, okay, when the motorcycle failed, did it make a loud noise from the engine and stop running? Or did it just bog out and die? Or did it cut harshly? These are all things that are very important to your diagnostic process. So let's say I was riding this Harley down the road and I was cruising along at 60 and all of a sudden the engine locked up and made a real nasty noise and the back tire uh, squealed to a halt when I was riding it. That would be an easy determination. Okay, possibly the, the bottom end locked up on this here Harley. I would try then by spinning it over by hand and seeing if the engine spins freely. Or if you're riding your motorcycle and it just kind of bogs down and you kind of, it's unresponsive in the throttle, I would be thinking either a spark issue or a fuel issue. So for this motorcycle that I'm repairing here, um, I already know the history of this motorcycle. This one sat for about 11 years, had fuel in the carb, uh, and it just sat around for a while. It hasn't been a road in a long, long time. So I know it did run when it was parked. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, before you go and crank it, if something in this situation where the, the motorcycle has sat for a long time, you wanna make sure that your engine is free. It's different on every motorcycle. This is just a very basic and general video. But usually, if you go on your left side, if you have a dirt bike, let's say, you could pop off that stator cover and you could turn that flywheel by hand with a wrench and a ratchet, and you just wanna make sure that the engine is spinning freely. Because if you have a motorcycle like this Harley, for example, if the engine's locked up, you don't, you don't wanna just go crank it on the starter. That could, that could be bad. Most sometimes they sit and they get a little rust in the cylinders, and just that little bit of hand movement will get you freed up, besides cranking it over with the starter, and you, know, you end up putting a big old gouge in the cylinder wall, or it can't push through, so it bends a connecting rod. You just wanna make sure it spins free by hand. So, like I said, I already determined why this motorcycle failed. Uh, this one was sitting for a long time, and I already determined that the engine is free. So, the first thing I want to do for this Harley here is I want to see why it's not cranking. And I, I already have my assumptions, but it's always good just to double check. I'm going to take a digital voltmeter here, and I'm going to put my, my leads onto the battery terminals. And you can see our voltage there. Is 0.38 so we need about 12.6 in this battery for this starting system to operate right and the uh, everything else to go good so first thing we want to do is either replace this battery or put it on a, put it on a jump pack I don't have a replacement battery for this bike yet I'll be getting one so what I'm gonna do for now for the sake of this video is I'm gonna put this on a jump pack so we can continue on go ahead and fire up old reliable here she's old but she still barks okay so we've got a battery charger hooked up um, this here is an electric start. If you have kickstart, you could do it. You could start kicking, see if your bike starts. I'm sure you already know since you've been probably kicking it for a while and now trying to get it to go. But we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna turn the key on this old Harley here. We're gonna pull in the clutch because it does have a clutch switch. We're gonna put it in run and then we're gonna hit the start button, see what we got. If you have an electric start, don't sit on the starter too long. It's actually bad for them. So I recommend doing maybe five, seven second intervals. Uh, not too long, uh, you don't wanna cook your starter. Okay, so we've determined we have a crank, but no start. Another really important step before you go gung-ho in your diagnostic process, and it, it sounds so stupid and so crazy, but it's so heavily overlooked, is just make sure that there's actual fuel in the tank. You'd be surprised how many people bring their bikes or foilers or whatever into the shop and there's just no gas in the tank. Okay, so one thing you're gonna wanna do is on 
most to all carbureted four-stroke engines and, and two-stroke engines, there's gonna be a petcock on the actual fuel tank. And you wanna ensure that this is not off. Uh, and if it is, go ahead and turn it to on and try that same procedure again. This one was on, I already checked it before. We tried cranking it, but this one is on here. Uh, if you have a choke, you could try pulling it out with the choke. You could try pulling off the choke and try kicking it or cranking it, see if that helps. Or you can, uh, if, if you choke it too much, you start smelling fuel. You wanna wait a, a few minutes because you're about to flood it, but you just wanna ensure that this petcock is indeed on. Okay, so we just tried cranking here. Uh, we had obviously no start as most people in this video I'm sure are having as well. The next thing I like to do, it's super simple and it just takes your eyeballs. On most cases, this here is an air filter. Uh, it's what filters the air going into the engine. I just like to take a double check, make sure this isn't plugged up. A lot of times there'll be a lot of debris in here. Maybe there's a mouse nest. You could even go another step and pull this actual filter off and check, make sure that you're actually getting air into the engine. Because an uh, internal combustion engine needs three main things to run. Air, fuel, and compression, and ignition. If you have those four things, most times your engine will run. Four strokes are a bit more complex. There's some other things like timing, ignition timing. There's a couple other things that will indeed stop an engine from running, but those are your four basic components needed for an internal combustion engine, four stroke that is. So once you've determined that your air filter is clean and your engine is getting air, the next part, the next step I like to do and I'm not gonna do it on this particular bike because this is a Harley and this is all chrome plated and it's very nice finish, but you could take some starting fluid and just put a bit, just a, a spurt into your air filter or if you want to, because that starter fluid is actually bad for your air, air filters, it's not ideal. You could just go directly into the engine. Now there is a safety hazard that comes with this. If you put too much starting fluid, I'll tell you what, that compressor waits for the worst times. So anyway, if you put too much starting fluid into your engine, and I mean, you sit there and you load it up, or even I've, I've, I've had this happen to me personally before, but if you put too much starting fluid in and you go to crank your bike or kick it, a lot of times it can actually backfire out of the carburetor and it, it can start a fire. So you wanna be very mindful of that when you're, when you're spraying starting fluid. Be super careful with it. Um, it. It's very easy to light something on fire, especially if you have oil spills or gas down here from previous attempts, that flame comes out, lights the, lights the uh, gas or oil up, and then you've got a huge issue on your hands. Uh, it's not just your bike starting in, it's a, it's a big old issue. So I like to do that. I like to spray a little bit of starting fluid, go ahead and crank it. Uh, if you do get a start, or you, you get an attempt to start, you get kind of then you know you have a fuel issue. So in most cases, um, majority of the time with carburetors, they do get clogged up. This new, the new gas we're using in cars, or the new gas we're using is it's high on ethanol and that ethanol is really really hard on carburetors it clogs up the jets and little orifices that are in there carburetors are packed with tiny little holes and the, the smallest bit of debris or gunk or varnish that gets in those jets or those orifices inside the carburetor will clog it and it'll make your bike either run poorly or no start at all so what i would do in that case if i did have a crank or a, a, a attempt to start with the starting fluid or even if you could use gas for it too. What I would do in that case is I would pull off the carburetor, but first I would pull off the fuel line and just ensure that we do have gas coming out of our petcock. And I, I put a cup under here, turn our petcock and make sure we have fuel coming out of the fuel line, uh, the intake fuel line for the carburetor. I've seen those petcock valves before. They get on the older old, older machines, even the newer ones, but sometimes the valves fail. And you can go ahead and you can turn it on, you won't have anything coming out, assuming you have gas in the tank, remember that one. Sometimes those petcock valves, they do fail. So I've had that where you actually have no fuel to the carburetor, but in most cases you do have fuel to the carburetor and you're getting it and then a lot of times you don't actually have fuel going through into the engine because the jets are clogged or the orifices are clogged or the float's stuck. So what I would do if I did have a start with ether is I'd pull the carb off and I'd go ahead and disassemble that and I would go ahead and clean it. Now I do have a video coming up on this channel on how to clean a carb, a uh, motorcycle carburetor. So stay tuned for that. That should be coming out shortly. Uh, it's in one of my next videos here, but for now we're just gonna jump up to uh, the next step. I do also wanna point out that when you are using the starting fluid or gas to start your engine or before you even turn it over, 
Make sure you check your engine oil, especially if your bike's been sitting for a long time and you're trying to get it running, or even if you're riding it down the road and it died on you. Check your engine oil, make sure you have the correct amount, make sure it's not way too dirty. Uh, obviously you don't want any chunks in there. So before you go cranking on it, trying to get it to start, just ensure you have the correct engine oil amount in there. Uh, it's a very good, it's, it's a small step. It takes you about 20 seconds, but it'll save you, it could save you thousands of dollars in an engine rebuild. Cause I've seen engines that have sat like this Harley, for example, for 11 years. And I could go cranking on this thing with no engine oil in there and I could seize a rod bearing once it starts up on the ether. Uh, or if I put, I do, if I do clean the carb and just rush and put it back in cause I'm excited, uh, I could run that engine, get it warmed up and then the engine seizes and now I'm, I'm down, you know, $1,500 for a low end rebuild or, or, you know, the same amount for a top end rebuild because I didn't take the 20 seconds before to check the oil. So it's very important. Just ensure you have oil in your machine before you go cranking on it, especially if it's set for a long time. Okay. So let's say you went ahead and you did your starting fluid or you cleaned your carb to ensure that you have fuel. Let's say you did that, you crank it or you kick it and you don't get nothing. Usually the second most common Failure point would be spark. This here engine has two spark plugs. There's a couple ways to test for spark. One is a rather old school way. It actually, you will pull off the spark plug boot. You'll take the spark plug out. You'll lay it down. You'll ground the spark plug to the head. Put your boot back in the end. You'll lay it here. Either have someone kick the bike or you can crank it and just watch for the blue spark on the end of the spark plug. This can be dangerous. Uh, for a couple of reasons. A, it's not so much it's gonna kill you, but if you do sit here and you're holding the plug, make sure you don't have like your, your finger on the engine block because those spark plugs, they put out a crazy amount of voltage. And when you get whacked by one, you certainly feel it and it's not very pleasant. The second way to do it is a bit more new school, I like to say, and it's with a super cheap spark tester. This one here is from Harbor Freight. It's nothing crazy. This end here goes into your spark plug boot just like that. This end here will go onto your actual spark plug. And now you can kick it or crank it and you'll actually see a little orange flash in here. It's just a light and it's indicating that you do have spark going to the spark plug. Now, the second reason why the first option is dangerous is because if you do have this cylinder loaded with fuel and you do have the spark plug hole out, gas and vapor will actually be shooting out of this hole and it's possible to catch that vapor and gas on fire with the spark being close to the cylinder here. So you wanna be very careful when you're doing that, that you don't end up lighting the whole bike on fire because you have a whole bunch of gas and stuff shooting out of the spark plug hole. What I like to do is I like to kick it over a couple times with the, with the plug out of the hole, out of the cylinder. And before I even have this, I move this, this boot way out of the way so it's not even arcing because that that arc can jump from the end of the boot to the cylinder head too if it's a real strong spark so i like to kick it over with the plug out a bunch of times or crank it just to get all that unburnt fuel out of the jug and then you're, you're safe to go ahead and do it the the uh the old school way now i'm going to go ahead and show you guys both ways here so i'm going to go ahead and get the get the jump pack hooked up again and then you guys can see here what it does when you have spark. All right, so we got a jump pack all fired back up. I'm gonna go ahead and crank this puppy over and you guys will see a little orange flash inside that. Or lack thereof. I'm actually diagnosing this bike as I'm making this video, so looks like we have a no spark issue. Normally you're gonna see a little orange flash in here and i'm gonna i'm gonna have to look at this i've also got a video coming up on this harley so i don't want to spoil too much but i'm gonna go ahead and look at this but i'll i'll, I'll put some b-roll in of what this orange flash looks like so i brought the spark tester over in my little 75 gn 100 here and i'm going to show you guys what this actual spark tester looks like once you're checking for spark by the way these are like six bucks they're super cheap so i would recommend getting one of these i do prefer pulling the plug out of the cylinder and checking to the cylinder wall i i believe that's a more accurate test for me. You can also see. Uh, it's a lot of fun, dude. Mid video. Uh, all right, let's get back to it. So these are super cheap, but I do prefer it. You can see the color of the spark with the uh, with the plug out and grounded to the head. You can see the color. Um, you can see how bright it is. It's super helpful to actually physically see the spark, but this is the safest way 
in the quickest way. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick this over and you guys can see what that looks like when it's sparking. So if you're in this situation like I'm in and you don't have any spark, there's a couple things I'm gonna be checking. One, the most common is going to be the coil. They seem to fail the most often and they're easy to check. You can actually do a resistance check on them. I won't pull this one out. I'll do that in the video coming up on this bike, but you could you could check up for your certain bike what the resistance reading should be on the, the main side or the, the primary side and the secondary side of the coil. Get your information there. You could determine if it's that. Another common issue would be the plug wires. Sometimes the plug wires get bad or the plug boots. Sometimes the spark plugs themselves is what's causing the no spark issue. That's common too. Another couple other things could be wiring to the coil or the CDI box could be bad. You could have a bad stator. There's, there's a couple number of things. It's different from bike to bike. It's very similar how they all work, but the test procedures are a little bit different. The voltage readings or the resistance readings. So whatever bike you do have, I would check up on that. Find your readings, all your measurements, everything you can do for your particular bike and go from there. But the first thing I would be checking would be the coil and checking the primary and secondary side, also checking the plugs. On this bike, I'll actually pull the plugs out, grind into the head and check the spark there. I already, I'm already pretty certain we don't have it, but just for second measure. So those things I named there are what you're gonna wanna check. There's a couple other things, but that's the very, very basics. So let's say you've got air, you've got fuel, and you've got spark. What's missing? There's one more thing that's missing compression. Now the way you're going to check this is with a compression gauge. I recommend a decent one. This one here again, you guys are going to think I'm a Harbor Freight sponsor, but it's not. It's a Maddox from Harbor Freight. Uh, or I'm not, not, it's not, it is from Harbor Freight, but I'm not sponsored by them, but if they'd like to, I wouldn't mind. So what you're going to do with this is you are going to pull out your spark plug. There will be an adapter on the end of this. So you'll take this end, whatever the thread size and pitch of your cylinder is, or your head is, you'll take your plug out, You'll actually go ahead and thread this in and you'll either kick or crank the bike. But when you do this, you want to make sure you have the throttle wide open when you're doing it. If you have that throttle plate closed, closed, the compression reading will be very, very low or lower than spec. And you might think that you have a different issue. So make sure when you're checking compression, you have your throttle wide open. That'll give you your best, highest reading. There's a couple things that go into checking compression. Now, if you check your compression and it's low, but it feels tight, uh, you could have what they call an automatic compression release or ACR. And you're gonna to wanna to research your particular bike that you're doing your compression test on. Cause there's a couple of bikes, take for example, my uh, 2009 KX250 F that has an ACR on it. And when you actually do a compression test with your throttle wide open and you're kicking it, the compression is lower than what actual spec is. Let's say spec is 180, and if you have an ACR, you're, you know, you'll be sitting around the 90 PSI. So just double check that you don't have or you do have a compression release and then go from there. Most, uh, most engine manufacturers or bike manufacturers will have a reading for an ACR compression reading. So like let's say if you're kicking in, it's 90 with the ACR, that's a pretty good reading. Um, but you don't want to be below that. The best way to check a bike for bad compression like rings or, or valve issues with an ACR is actually a leak down test. Compression test is not the best for an ACR engine, but it is a very, very good starting point to checking. Now there's a number of factors that could be leading into low compression. One of them is bad rings, bad piston, bad cylinder. That's, or that's three reasons. Another reason that's somewhat commonly overlooked, but very simple and extremely common is bad valve adjustment. Usually, if your valves are too tight, that valve will actually be hanging open a little bit. And I'll show a diagram here for it. But if that valve is hanging open a little bit, the valve is not seated inside the head. And if your valve is poking out a little bit, compression is actually able to leak through that open valve and it'll throw your reading way off. I've actually seen engines that had zero compression because the valves were too tight. That was actually that 09 KX250 right there. The valves were adjusted way too tight that the compression spec was really, really low on it. So if you don't have zero compression, or if you don't have good compression, don't immediately assume your engine is bad. I would look into your manufacturer's manual or your manufacturer's repair manual and see what the procedure is for checking your valves. And setting your valves is a super easy process. 
I'll actually, I'll put the video up here on that 09 KX250F behind me. I set the valves on that because the valves were too tight. So you could watch that video to kind of see how it's done. Some valves use like a rocker arm with an adjustment nut on top. Super easy. You could just, you know, loosen that adjuster, check your clearance with a feeler gauge. Some engines use buckets and shims. So you got to have a shim kit. And you got to do a little bit of math to figure out what shim you have, your current shim size plus your new one and what your valve clearance should be. It's a little tricky, but it's super, it's, it's a pretty simple process to actually check valves. So if I had zero compression or low compression, that would be my first thing I would do is check valve clearance. And let's say if your valve clearance is spot on from that point on, I would be making sure that the valves aren't leaking and the cylinder isn't worn. The best way to do that would be with, again, a leak down test. And you can actually hear the engine or you could hear the air because the way a leak down test works is you actually hook, you got your gauges and you, same thing like a compression tester, you thread it into the head and you put compressed air to that. And then you actually, you watch your gauges and it should be able to hold a certain amount of air pressure for a certain amount of time. And if you, if you put air in there and it's just shh, leaking down like that, you got a serious, serious leak. Or if you got a slow leak, the best thing about that is you can hear where the air is escaping. So if I were to do a leak down test on this engine and I had, you know, everything hooked up and I heard air coming out of this bottom end here, the oil is kind of bubbling. I would be thinking, okay, my rings are shot because the air is actually being able to be pressed through the, that, those rings uh, at a serious rate and it's bubbling the engine oil. Or if I heard it up top here coming out from the valve cover, I'd say, hey, I've got a valve issue or a head issue. Maybe, you know, my valves aren't seating right. I'd probably go ahead and double check my clearance, make sure I got everything right. And then I'd go from there. I'd probably end up pulling the head and make sure I don't have a bent valve or a bad valve seat or something like that. So if you don't have good enough compression, it's not the end of the world. It's not, does not mean your engine shot always. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but there's still things in place you should check before determining that your engine is shot. So the next thing, that's fairly uncommon. I don't see this often, if ever. You do wanna make sure that your exhaust isn't plugged. It has happened before, not to me, but I've seen videos on it of either a mouse nest or a rat's nest or a piece of, a clump of grass gets caught up in there and it's just really locked into the exhaust pipe. And if your exhaust can't flow out, your engine's gonna have a really, really, really hard time starting or it won't start at all. So just make sure that your pipes are clean or you don't have a bunch of carbon buildup or whatever in your pipes. Like I said, that's more on the uncommon side, but it still does happen. It's one of those things you could check just to make sure, you know, hey, I've got air going in. I've got everything, you know, I need. Timing's good, compression's good. Make sure that you're able to actually flow those burnt gases out of the end of your exhaust pipes. Okay, so for my final step when checking a bike that does not run, the last thing I'm gonna be looking at now is either timing, whether that be mechanical, meaning crank, cams, all that stuff, or ignition. There's a couple ways. For example, on my 2009 KX250F right up there, if you watch that video I linked before, what happened on that one is the reason that wouldn't start as well was the mechanical timing was off. The actual cam gear had spun on the cam sprocket throwing the mechanical timing off. And if your mechanical timing's off, your engine is likely not going to run, or if it does run, it's gonna run very, very poorly. And there's big issues that come with mechanical timing being off because if it's an interference engine, your piston will come up and it'll contact your valve, boom, engine's destroyed. So I like to do a simple mechanical test first, and it's different from engine to engine. So once again, refer to whoever the manufacturer your bike is, look for a service manual and see how to check the timing there. Usually it's very simple. You line up a mark on the flywheel, you'll pull your valve cover or valve covers off. Make sure the line on your cam sprocket is sitting where it needs to be. Once again, that'll all be in, you, you can find that information online or you can find that information in a service manual. Now for ignition timing, this is relatively uncommon, but I've seen it probably four or five times is that a lot of the older school motorcycles, the small engine stuff, so you'll have a flywheel. And that flywheel is connected directly to the crankshaft. Now to keep that flywheel from spinning on the crankshaft, there's a bolt through there. And there's also what they call a keyway stock. And that is just like a little tiny piece of metal. I'll put a picture of one up. And that just keeps the flywheel locked in a certain spot on that crankshaft. Because that flywheel has to be a certain spot because the engine is spinning, spinning and it's all timed. And once that there's kind of like a magnet or a pickup, that senses a magnet on the flywheel, that has to hit at the right spot 
in the combustion cycle to ignite the spark plug at the right time. And I've seen where those keyway stocks are stripped out and the flywheel is just kind of rotating on there freely and it throws off the ignition timing. So a good way to check for that is you can actually, sometimes you could take the flywheel and you could spin it and it's not rotating the engine, or you can actually pull the flywheel off. Most times you need a special puller and you could see the condition of that keyway stock. So that about does it guys. That's what I do to test a bike that's not starting. That's my, pretty much my basic procedure I go through when checking a bike that doesn't start. It usually works out really, really well for me in that order. Uh, it's usually, I, I like to, from my uh, experiences with bikes, I like to do most common to least common and I kind of work my way down the scale and it usually works out pretty well. So hopefully this video helps you guys get your bikes up and going. Um, like I said, there'll be a video dropping pretty soon on this one, so stay tuned if you'd like to see that. Uh, if this video helped you guys out, please don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I very much appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.